Um, I join so many in this place across um, both sides of the chamber in paying my respects to the memory of uh, the Hon. Robert James Lee Hawke, AC, and um, acknowledge the uh, tremendous outpouring of um, both grief and joy in his life that we experienced at the Sydney Opera House um, at his memorial service. <clears throat> in many ways, um, Bob Hawke's uh, political life, and particularly his prime ministership and uh, his, his time leading this country, uh, reflects so many of the significant uh, moments in my own life. And, uh, indeed, the, uh, the 1983 election when he was elected was my first election to vote at, uh, at, the, at a federal election. I just missed the 1980 election by a month. I'm sure my vote would have made a huge difference to Labor's cause at the 1980 election. However, I was very pleased that uh, the first election, being the 83 election, saw um, the Hawke government take uh, federal power and, more importantly, bring in a really important agenda that was about taking our nation um, to its potential. And uh, I think that reflected not only in the economic, the international and the social, but also in uh, a really important conversation we had as a nation about what our future was. And to be able to do that requires uh, leadership that people, as so many in this place have expressed, trust because they know that leader uh, understands them and that he epitomises their hopes. And I think that's very much what Bob Hawke did. Um, it was the case that so many of those changes were not easy. Uh, looking back, it is easy to say that it was obvious and uh, it was uh, the sort of reforms that needed to happen, and, but at the time they were not easy reforms, uh, both within our own party and movement and um, within the national debate. And so uh, it was certainly the case that um, for me, as at that point still a university student, newly married, um, it was tremendous to see a Labor government take uh, the, that federal election. Of course, um, he was re-elected in 84, and by then I had my first son, uh, and then re-elected in 1990 when um, I had my second son. So his, his prime ministership encompasses a very significant part of my adult life. And uh, I have to say, um, uh, when um, I was born, I don't think, I'm pretty certain, no Bible fell open at any significant passage. <laughs> so when I voted in March 1983 as a a uni student and um, young adult, I little imagined that I would have the great honour of my own community of standing in this parliament today acknowledging the enormous contribution that Bob Hawke made to this nation. Uh, it is the case that um, Bob's government made significant and massive reforms that established uh, this country for a long-term future of uh, prosperity and fairness. And those two things, as my colleagues um, have talked about, have been profoundly important for all of us as we, as legislators, deal with the issues that face us today. And they've been well canvassed. But recognising so many of my colleagues want to speak in this debate, I just want to use the opportunity to acknowledge that legacy, in particular, as my colleague, the member for Richmond, talked about in education, which I am very passionate about. Um, but I want to use the opportunity to put on the record the great love and affection um, that my own region had for Bob uh, and the great um, commitment that he gave us consistently. As a trade union leader, um, he was you know, very conscious of a, a, a region like mine and very supportive of us as we had, um, in particular, mining and steel industries in which he was um, significantly involved. Uh, but also as Prime Minister, um, his great uh, engagement and love of the Illawarra was uh, very much obvious. Like so many in this place, um, Bob Hawke came and campaigned with me. It's hard to believe when you listen to all the contributions that there was only one man. Um, it's hard to, to believe that there was a campaign of any of the colleagues in this place. Um, probably only on this side of the house, to be fair, uh, that Bob wasn't involved in. It's just an extraordinary thing. Our former leaders very often 
uh, continue to support their party in that way. But um, the extent of what Bob did is just an extraordinary reflection of the fact that he was Labor to his bootstraps. His love of the Labor movement um, was profound, and whenever there was a call, um, right up to his very later years, he was out there campaigning. And certainly for me in 2002, the by-election in 2004, he came and he did the great, you know, as everyone's put on the record, the walk through the shopping centre, getting mobbed by people, taking the time um, to shake hands, to talk to everybody who wanted to talk to him, um, do photos, all of those sorts of things, because Bob loved being amongst the people uh, and he loved being there promoting Labor values and Labor candidates. And uh, it certainly did that for me. He did laugh and he would often say, because I was always quite overwhelmed and appreciative that a former Prime Minister came to help me along. And he'd always say, well, of course a hawk would come and help a bird. <laughs> and so he, he always you know, he, uh, had that uh, slightly dad joke uh, with me on all those occasions. And um, uh, we really appreciated uh, the support that he gave. But the community um, just reflected what so many have described as that great love affair that Australia had with Bob, even years after uh, he'd left parliament people would flock to talk to him. And I just really want to say a personal appreciation for that. But also, he, in his great love for the Labor movement, he also did that with your rank and file members. And members across both sides of the House would know, you know, those dedicated volunteers, people would like to be cynical about politics. But when you meet the rank and file members of parties who are dedicated to the values and the dreams and aspirations that you're trying to pursue, and don't you know, get anything out of it other than what they hope is something better for their community, their family. Um, they're really, really amazing people. And Bob did the same for them in my area as well. You know, they would not, I commented to my local media, there would not, I reckon, be a Labor Party member in my area who didn't have a photo with Bob Hawke. Because whenever he was there, he always took the time to thank them for their supports and their efforts on behalf of the Labor movement as well. And I just want to use the last little bit of time to share some of their reflections because I feel this moment is as much theirs as it is mine as their representative. Chris Lacey is the pre president of the Thrill Branch, and the Thrill Branch had a 100th anniversary um, dinner. And Bob came down and was the guest speaker. Of course, we got the obligatory singing of Solidarity Forever. Um, but he didn't just pop in and do a speech, sing a song, thank everybody, and, and head back to Sydney. He stayed and signed books and shook hands and took photos. Chris says throughout his long life, Bob Hawke always had strong connections to Illawarra, Illawarra workers. His government saved the steel industry and played an important role in shaping modern multicultural Australia. In Thoreau, we remember his involvement in our centenary celebration as a Labor branch and his memorably leading a rousing rendition of Solidarity Forever. And Gino Mandarino, who's secretary of the Wollongong branch, he said, I first met him 32 years ago and numerous times over those decades. Bob inspired my interest in politics and public policy. He exemplified Bagot's view of great prime ministers as men of commonplace opinions and uncommon administrative abilities. Bob Hawke was the best of the best, and like Whitlam and Rand, Labor leaders of the modern era, he now joins them in belonging to the ages. Leanne Hunt, who's secretary of the Port Kembla branch. Bob Hawke, the very definition of a conviction leader. Jess Malcolm Roberts, secretary of Balgowney branch. Bob Hawke didn't beat around the bush or pretend he was something he wasn't. Even though people might not have agreed with his position, they respected him for being genuine, and it is this that Australians value most. His policy shaped Australia into what it is today, bringing in many of the essential reforms my generation takes for granted. The Labor movement and all Australians are fortunate for having had him as our PM. And Dr Rowena Ivers of the Thrill Branch says, thanks to Bob for Medicare, the gift that keeps on giving. Mm -hmm. Can I extend, as so many have in this place, my deepest condolences to Blanche and to all Bob's family uh, and his very many millions of friends around the country, so many of them live in the Illawarra, uh, and also pay respect to the great partnership he had with Hazel Hawke uh, in that enormous period of uh, 
leadership for our nation. I uh, want to recognise Hazel's role in that. My deepest condolences. Um, we are all so much better off for the life of Bob Hawke. Mm. Thank, Thank you. you.